Hey there, after pondering for quite a while I finally decided to make this video and please watch it to the end and try to think about it for a while before concluding that you disagree with me and that what I say is dangerous and before getting all outraged. I think the subject is important enough to at least deserve some thought. Of course, the first thing that comes to mind when you think about euthanasia or assisted suicide is people who are very old or terminally ill, people who are suffering a lot and there is no cure for them and all they want is to die in a decent and pain-free way. Unfortunately for these people, euthanasia is illegal in most parts of the world, so they are basically left with two choices, either kill themselves or continue to suffer until their natural death. But why is this such a big problem? Why is there a need for a law allowing someone else to do it for them? I mean, they can't just kill themselves, right? The issue is not that simple. First of all, thinking about the ways people take their own lives, most of the methods are traumatic, violent and painful. Then there are of course the cases where the person is physically incapacitated to commit suicide. Also, a lot of things can go wrong and after a failed suicide attempt you may end up worse than you were before. I just believe that it is inhumane for a person to not have the legal right to die with some dignity and in a painless way. Personally, I think the worst case scenario is when you are both unable to physically do it and unable to communicate your wish. I remember first thinking about this when I was about 10 or so and I saw this news about a 20-something year old girl who became completely paralyzed after an accident. She couldn't move, she couldn't speak. There was actually someone pouring eye drops into her eyes to prevent them from drying because she couldn't even blink and she was to remain in this condition for her entire life. I honestly cannot think of something more horrible than spending decades and decades like that. I think we should have a system that allows us to make a decision in advance in case something like this happens. Something like a donor card. It would be an euthanasia card, something that you can carry around with you and in case a tragedy happens, your doctor will know that you prefer to be euthanized rather than becoming a vegetable. Now, I know that most of the people who oppose this usually do it for religious reasons. More than 85% of the entire world population is religious and most religions, actually I think all of them that I know of, oppose suicide and condemn it, usually attaching some sort of punishment for it in the afterlife or the next life, whatever the case may be. But I also know that many of my viewers are not religious, so you probably already agree with euthanasia under certain circumstances and in certain cases. But keeping in mind that we are only talking about legal adults with the mental capacity to decide, where do we draw the line? I mean, how sick must a person be in order to qualify? In how much pain should they be in before they have the legal right to die? Let's say their illness is not terminal, but just unbearable. A living hell to live with, but otherwise they can live for 20 more years like that. Should they come back and ask to be euthanized when they have, I don't know, six more months to live? What is the reasonable line here? And who gets to decide this? Who gets to tell the person asking to die that, well, buddy, you know what? I decided that your life is still worth living, according to my standards, of course, so sorry. Because of our innate survival instinct, people are hardwired to think that life is preferable to death in any circumstances, that nothing, absolutely nothing justifies renouncing life, at least not if you have your health. And still, regardless what you think and regardless how you feel, about 3,000 people commit suicide every day and many of them are young and healthy. By the way, when I say healthy, I mean what the average person would consider to be healthy. But the reality is that 87 up to 98% of all the people committing suicide are suffering from a mental disorder. Now, why would you differentiate so much between a physical and a psychological illness? And how can you measure and quantify the level of suffering of a person with a mental disorder who is not yourself. Of course, there is the argument that while a physical terminal illness is without a cure, a psychological disorder can be fixed and the person can be treated and turned normal, right? In about 75% of all cases of suicide, the individual has seen a physician within the prior year before their death. 45 to 66% within the prior month. About 33 to 41% of the people who committed suicide had assistance from mental health services within the prior year. 20% within the prior month. I know these facts are stressful to think about and hard to comprehend and assimilate, but some people, even if body-wise they are in perfect health, because of their mental state, for them, their life is just not worth living. And they seek help, 
they are told they have all these reasons to live and that life is great and a wonderful gift, they are popped full of pills meant to artificially disable them from feeling bad emotions and yet they end up killing themselves. Now you tell me, you give me your best arguments why you think that these people should not have the right to a painless death, but instead have the last moments of their life be the most brutal thing they ever experienced. I do have to say though that there are some arguments that I'm just not interested in, like arguments from religion. It is a sin to kill yourself. Nobody is telling you to commit suicide. And not everybody has the same beliefs that you do. Deal with it. Also, I am not impressed with arguments purely from emotions with nothing else behind them. But how would you feel if your own brother wanted to be euthanized? My personal feelings have absolutely no relevance to somebody else's right to body autonomy. And also, you may want to think about it more when it comes to arguments that are just speculative. But this way, the suicide rates would skyrocket. How can you possibly know that? You know, I would never militate for people to just be able to go through a door, ask to be euthanized and get an injection, just like that. I am proposing a well-regulated system, where before anything else you would have people talking to you and determining if you have the mental capacity to make an informed decision and who would first of all offer medical assistance. Actually, how can you tell that the suicide rates won't in fact decrease this way? Take the example of the teenage boy who, out of an impulse, jumps in front of a train because his girlfriend dumped him. Maybe, knowing that he has the alternative of assisted suicide, he would rather take that option. And maybe, while talking to professionals, he will realize that suicide is permanent while his problems are temporary. And even if that fails, knowing that two weeks from now, Wednesday on 3 o'clock, he has an appointment to end his life, Maybe, just maybe, these two weeks are exactly what he needs for a wake-up call. I don't want to make this video a mile long, but I will add some further thoughts to it on my blog, which I will link in the low bar, and you can check that out. Also, I have a personal favor to ask you, because I know this video is gonna get flagged, and I don't want to get a strike for it, so please give it thumbs up, even if you don't agree with it necessarily, but you think it should remain on YouTube, and you think the subject is at least worth the conversation. Thanks.